Hey everybody, welcome to Altium Academy. I am your host, Zach Peterson. I'm a technical consultant for Altium and today we are gonna be doing something very fun. We're actually gonna be doing a demo with a small VNA that you can use to get some S-parameter data and then we're gonna go through and analyze that data. The VNA that we're going to use is the Libre VNA. This is a low cost VNA that gets up to a purported six gigahertz bandwidth. Power falls off a little bit above four gigahertz but you can still get some good measurements with this in that range. And we're gonna use this with a test board that I have to get some actual S-parameter data. Then we're gonna go through and analyze it and see what this test board can do. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, everybody, so the test board that we're gonna be using today is a three-port filter. Basically, a signal can come into one port and then it can come out of two other ports. And this filter essentially band passes into two different frequencies after splitting off into two branches. So we're gonna test this filter and we're gonna get some S-parameter data from it. But first, let's review the classical definition of S-parameters and how they extend to N ports. And we'll actually see what we're gonna measure with the Libre VNA. So this test board is pretty simple. We have one input and the input goes to a power divider and it's gonna go out to one of two outputs. Now here, this power divider ideally just splits this input power into 50% over here and then 50% over here. So it's basically just like a Wilkinson divider. Then we have a filter circuit and then we have another filter circuit. And then we have output number one, and then output number two. If you remember the classical definition of S parameters, it's typically defined in terms of two ports. So we generally will draw something like this. We have a box, we have our input and our output ports, and then we have our reference down here. We just draw it out like this. So here we actually have three ports. So we would essentially have an additional port out here. So we could call this out one and then out two. So this can make measurement a little bit difficult sometimes, but what we're essentially going to do is we're going to look at how this input here on the left relates to these two outputs. So if this is port one, we can call this one port two, and then we'll call this one port three. And if we were to write out the S parameter matrix for this entire circuit, we would essentially have an S parameter matrix that looks like this. We'd have our S11, S22, and our S33 values, which represent reflections off of these three points coming into the inputs and the outputs. And then we would have our transfer S parameter coefficient. So we'd have our S21, S31, S32, and so on. And this gives a total of nine different S parameters. Now, with our Libre VNA, we're only gonna be able to measure two of these at any given time. So we're essentially looking at just these subsets of different S parameters at any given time. Here, what we're gonna be measuring is, number one, the reflection coefficients. So the reflection coefficients coming into the different ports are just given by these diagonal values. So the S11, S22, and S33 values. So here we would have our S11, here we would have our S22, and then here we would have our S33. These cross terms tell you how much power is essentially lost at each frequency going from one of these ports over to another port. So this branch like this would be S21, and then here we would have S31. In the opposite direction, we would have S13. Same thing up here. In the opposite direction, we would have S12. And then if you like, you can even measure the circulation from port two to port three. So here, this would be S23 or S32. So this is conceptually what all of these different parameters are telling you. And all we have to do is hook up our VNA to these different ports. We can take these different measurements and that's going to then tell us what these different S parameter values are. And if we really wanted to, we could build up an entire matrix for these S parameters at different frequencies. 
Okay, so on these three port S parameters, I want to provide just a little more context in this window because uh, it's a little difficult to do on the whiteboard. So when we have these three port S parameters that I've described in this uh, matrix here, um, what happens when you actually use a two port device like the Libre VNA to try and measure these S parameters? Well, if you input a signal at port one and then you measure the output in, at port two or vice versa, the, the value that you measure at the output port is going to depend on the termination that's applied at port three. So is it terminated with, say, the characteristic impedance or the reference impedance? Is it left open? Is it short? All three of those options are going to affect the, uh, the S parameter that you determine from this instrument. So there's actually a relation that you can use to determine uh, or actually to relate the two port S parameters to the three port S parameters. So the three port parameters are defined up here and those are the true S parameters for the device, assuming that all three ports are operational simultaneously. This is the true three port parameters, but what you actually measure is this SIJ prime, where I and J are, are either one, two, or three. Okay, so this is what you're actually measuring with the Libre VNA, and you can relate that value back to the S parameters for the true three port device. So there's a little bit of math that you would have to actually do with the measurements that we're gonna get in order to get back to the real three port parameters or the three port S parameters for the actual device. Now, why do we see all these terms in here? Well, here we have a reflection going on at port three, okay? So if port three were perfectly terminated at all frequencies, and that's not an easy thing to do, right? If port three were just a transmission line and it was always just constantly 50 ohms, then we just throw a 50 ohm resistor across here and then gamma three would be zero. In reality, that's actually quite difficult. So in our device, we don't have that situation at all. Um, we actually have a, a bit uh, more complex issue where this termination is a function of frequency. So you're not just going to throw a resistor across here and expect that it's going to be terminated at all frequencies. So gamma three is going to be some function of frequency, okay, and it's going to be non-zero. If you leave it open, it's going to just be one. What we have here is we have the the, the two port uh, S parameter that we measure, and then it's related to all of the different three port parameters. So the reason for that is because when a signal comes into port one, it's going to travel down to port three, but then it could reflect from port three. And then some of that power could come back to port one, or it could come over to port two. When some of that power that's reflected from port three comes over to port two, it actually creates an error in the true S parameter measurement here of SIJ. And that's why we have this relationship here. So if uh, gamma three were actually zero, then of course this fraction would go away and then the two and the three port parameters would be equal. Now that's not actually what we have in, in reality. So in this video, we're, we're just gonna skip past this uh, mathematical uh, issue here. The reason for that is because inverting between two port measurements and three port measurements is a bit time consuming and we just don't have time for it in this video. But I did wanna point this out because you can't just use a two port device and expect to get the true three port S parameters except in a very specific situation. However, there is some math that you can do to take your measurements and then get back to the real three port S parameters. So we're going to go ahead and just take the measurements to show how you would do this and the mathematics of it. Um, I'm sure there are some lectures out there somewhere. Um, we might do a video on this on, in the future, but this is more for your information just to understand a bit better what we're actually measuring in this system. Okay, so the way a VNA works is actually pretty simple. They, they are complex devices internally, but the measurement that they perform is relatively simple to understand. So we have two ports here, port number one and port number two. The way the device works is it's going to source a wave out of port number one. That wave is going to travel over one of these cables, it's going to travel into our device, and then it's going to reflect off of the input of the device and then travel back to port one. Some of that wave will transmit through the device and then travel over another coax cable over here to port two. 
and the device is gonna measure how much power was reflected back to port one and how much power transmitted over to port two. Then using the definitions that we presented in the other videos, you can then calculate the S parameter at that frequency. It then iterates to another frequency and as it iterates to the next frequency, it performs the measurement again. Now, if you look on screen, right now there's nothing attached to the VNA. So here we've got all the S parameters displayed in different formats. We've got Smith charts here for our S11 and S22 S parameters. And then uh, here we have our S21 and S12 uh, values displayed on a chart. Now, what I can do here is I can just double click and I can set up my measurement here. So here I wanna show S11 on this graph, and then we wanna show S21 and we'll turn off S12, and then we'll go ahead and turn off the phase. So these are the measurements that we wanna take, and they're shown on screen right now. Now, before you get started, you need to calibrate this thing. Now, I've already calibrated this, and I saved the settings here to a cal file. I'm just gonna open it, and it's gonna load those up. And you'll notice here that as soon as I did that, the S11 uh, value went all the way up to zero dB, that means all of the power that the device is trying to send out of port one is getting reflected back into port one. And that's exactly what you would expect because we have an open circuit right here. Now to calibrate the device, you need to use these standards. And when you order a Libre VNA, you're gonna get this type of pack of standards. This comes with a reference open, a reference short, and then two reference loads that are terminated at 50 ohms within the frequency range that this is gonna operate at. And you basically just plug them up to the different ports. Um, you're gonna use your coax cables to make those connections. And once you do that, you'll be able to get some measurements for those types of connections. The device will then use that to then calibrate calibrate so it knows when it's measuring an open, when it's measuring a short, and when it's measuring 50 ohms. And then using that, it can calculate the S parameters for any other impedance that is connected between these two ports. Now, I've loaded up my configuration here on the Libre VNA program. I'm just gonna go up here and make sure it's set to short, open, load, and through. And that's this SOLT setting, and it is set to that. And now we can just go ahead and hook up our device. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook up my input to port one. So my input is this top port, which is where the power will split inside the board. And now I'm gonna connect the other one to this other port and connect that over to port two. So you'll notice that when these connections are made, what happened to the graph? Well, you'll see that the graph eventually changed up at the higher end of the frequency range. So we can already see that this device has very strong loss down here at lower frequencies. And that's because this S21 curve, which is our green curve, has very low values for magnitude, essentially down at 90 dB here at about, uh, this is about 10 megahertz. So negative 90 dB, that's a lot of loss. Now it eventually rises and gets to the negative 30 dB range. So that's three orders of magnitude. So basically if I'm sending out one watt of power here, I'm getting one milliwatt over to here. So that's not very good uh, for a filter uh, if you're trying to transmit in that range. But it is very good for a filter if you're trying to block in this range. So it's blocking a lot of power. Now let's look at what's happening up here at 4.5 gigahertz and, and higher frequencies. Now here we can start to see where this thing is acting like a really good filter. And it's acting like a really good filter right around here at about five gigahertz. So you can see here at five gigahertz, we have very low loss. And then that's seen from the green curve, which is our S21 curve, going up to a very high value in terms of dB, okay? So here we're only at negative 2.3 decibels at about five gigahertz. That means it's transmitting a lot of power over here to port two. Now we can also see from the S11 curve, which is here in yellow, that we have very low reflection. So this very low reflection can be seen here from this value of negative 20 dB reflection. So that's very small reflection. That basically means that one one hundredth of the power is getting reflected as the wave travels from port one over to here at this input port and then gets reflected back here to port one. This is a pretty good filter right at about five gigahertz. You can see it also provides pretty reasonable performance here, a little bit lower at about 4.78 gigahertz or so. So that's also pretty good. So now I'm gonna just move this over to the other port and I just unplug it. Go ahead and move this guy on over. 
Now you see it's pretty similar, except for when we look at some of these frequencies, we see they've shifted a little bit. That's because these two filter arms are slightly different. But if you look here, you can see that we have very high uh, pass or very high band passing uh, right here in about the 4.8 gigahertz range. So, so they're pretty similar. Um, however, the real performance of this device as a band pass filter starts to be seen when you look at these two peaks here, or I should say these two valleys here uh, in the S11 graph. So remember, the S11 graph represents the reflection off of this port for power coming in this direction. And here at these frequencies, we have very good match to approximately 50 ohms for uh, this port. And you can see that here because we get these dips here in the S parameter data. So you can see right here at about 4. Point, it's about 4.95, uh, I should say 4.95, we have negative 35 or negative 34.48 dB of uh, return loss. So that's pretty good. That means we have really good matching right here at this port uh, for waves traveling in uh, this direction. Same thing over here, we've got, um, not uh, the same, but it's a little less in return loss. Our return loss is about uh, negative 28 dB right at uh, 4.867 gigahertz. So that's pretty good too. And then you can see here, we have the corresponding bumps up here uh, in the S21 data uh, at those frequencies. So this thing is band passing pretty well at those frequencies, um, could be band passing a little better, but you can see here it's losing about, you know, half the power um, at those frequencies. Now, just for comparison, if we wanted to look at what happens in the opposite direction, we're just gonna bring up the S22 and the S12 data, and we can just overlay all of those. And then you can see here that uh, these curves largely coincide. So what I mean by largely coincide is that they exhibit the same behavior. So waves traveling in to the device this direction in this port have similar behavior as waves traveling in to the device this direction from this port. Now we can do something fun because this is a three port device and we can then swap over to here. So now we're looking at waves that travel into the device from this port coming over to this port and vice versa. Just for clarity, let's go ahead and just look at the S11 and S21 data. So here what this is looking at is the data for waves coming into this port and then traveling out of this port. And we're looking at the reflection right here off of this port, and then what is transmitted through this port. Here in the S parameter data, we can see very nicely, we have uh, these two dips here at about 4.86 gigahertz. They're very similar to where they were in the previous setting. And uh, here we have the other dip uh, right at about 4.9. So very similar to what we had in the previous setting. So this filter is very nicely allowing waves to pass uh, through uh, this uh, loop uh, uh, inside the device. Now remember, there's a splitter here, okay? And this splitter would normally allow some power to travel to this port. However, this port is open right now. So there is some reflection off of this port. And uh, that is something that you could uh, account for if we had a three port VNA. Unfortunately, we only have a two port VNA. So we're only able to look at these two ports. There are some important points that you can uh, determine just by looking at any S parameter graph. So here in this graph, when you have this very uh, high value for uh, this yellow curve or this S11 curve, you see it's very close to zero dB. Well, that means that we have a lot of reflection. It basically means that our reflection coefficient coming into port number one, so this is port one and this is the input, uh, is very close to 100%. And then the log of 100% or the log of one is zero which would give you this zero dB value here. So if you want this thing to transmit a lot of power through this port, then you would want to have very low values for S11. Remember, S21 measures transmission and loss. It's telling you exactly how much uh, of the signal that then travels through here and is then lost as it travels through the device and eventually emerges out of this, uh, this port here and then travels into port two on the device. So we would like to have the uh, the green curve to be very high 
uh, in terms of dB, essentially meaning very close to zero, um, and that would uh, indicate that a lot of power is being transmitted at those frequencies. So that's what these curves mean. This is how you get this data. This is how you understand it. And um, this is how you use, the use this device. So it's a pretty fun device. Um, there, it's not too expensive as far as VNAs go. I know not everybody has a lot of money to blow on uh, vector network analyzers, um, but this is something that you can buy on uh, Amazon or eBay, um, probably like Ali Baba for uh, not too much money. And um, it's a nice tool for working at these lower frequencies. So you can see here, um, it's spanning into the 2.5 gigahertz range. I mean, you could test Wi-Fi or Bluetooth links with this if you wanted to. There are some other features that we're gonna play with in some upcoming videos. So you can see here, there's a signal generator. And then what's also fun is it has a spectrum analyzer. So with this spectrum analyzer, if we wanted to, we could start analyzing uh, the power spectrum in uh, a arbitrary waveform or in like an oscillator uh, waveform, um, or if we had like a switching waveform on a wave regulator, whatever we wanted to analyze, we could do it with this. So we'll be doing that in some upcoming videos. So stay tuned and keep watching. All right, everybody, so this concludes our short series on S-parameters. We've gone through the fundamental theory, we've gone through some of the math, we've gone through the concepts, and now, finally, we've gone through some actual measurements. So hopefully this clears up any confusion about S-parameters because they are an extremely important topic, not just for RF PCBs, but also for high-speed digital stuff, and of course, in simulations. This is one of the main metrics that you will use in simulations to evaluate interconnects. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave your comments and questions in the comments section. We love getting your comments and questions. Send your comments and questions over to YouTube at altium.com. You might just see your question in a Q&A video coming up soon. Thanks everybody, and definitely don't forget to call your fabricator.